This is King of the Mountain in Nosuke Hashibura. This figure is by the company Figma. It is the DX edition, so it comes with some more accessories. We'll just have a look at the box here. So he had a picture of Inosuke at the front, some pictures at the back, and a picture on the side of the box as well. This is a sleeve, so if you can take the actual figure out of that, that outer sleeve, and you can see the the actual box for the figure here. You can have a good look at the figure and the accessories there. And also you have a few more pictures of the figure there on the box. So we will get this one opened up and we'll start off by taking a look at some of the accessories. I've got all the accessories that come with the figure laid out here on the table. So you do actually get this little uh, instruction manual, which shows you all the accessories you get with the figure, as well as how the figure um, moves in terms of articulation. So you've got that little diagram there of the, the legs, which you can drop down to get more range. And it basically shows you how um, all the accessories attach on and what accessories you actually get with the figure and how to use the stands, etc. So is a nice, nice little inclusion from Figma there. Um, we have the stand here. So one of the display stands. So this would be if you just wanted to display the figure on its own without any of the other accessories. And you do get this larger display stand. And that's if you want to use the figure as well as the accessories. Um, gives you some good options there in, in terms of displaying the figure. So we have these two effect parts here, which are made from translucent translucent plastic, which look very nice. And you've got a little hole there for, the, for you to attach onto the stand, onto one of those. Uh, those arms that come with the with the stand it does look very nice. This accessory part uh, you can use that for when Inosuke is using his attacks. You also get this little um, selection of stickers, which you can stick on to Inosuke to give him a bit more expression. So here we have his katanas. Now. Inosuke loves to uh, have this design on his katana, so he'll use a rock <laughs> to break them up into that sort of pattern you see. Uh, to attach this onto the hand, the, the back part of the katana does come off, so it's a lot easier to have Inosuke hold them and get them into his hands a lot easier. And here you have the wrapped up versions of his katana. And that will peg in to the side of Inosuke. Uh, we'll have a look at that a bit later. And here you have quite a few different options when it comes to uh, to hands. So you can see here, I, I like that Figma include this where it's got all the hands attached onto one to one piece. Just makes things. A lot neater, a lot tidy instead of having loose hands everywhere. But you can see you've got quite a lot of options there with some gripping hands, some open hands, you've got a little thumbs up uh, there as well. I think there's more hands here than you get with um, with uh, Zenitsu. So you have a lot more options here. So you have some more gripping hands. Slightly open hand, maybe a fighting pose, and another thumbs up. And these do have uh, a little peg in them, and I think that's to stop them from shrinking, perhaps. It's a good little addition to have. And now we'll have a look at the 
separate head sculpt you get. So here you can see Inosuke without his uh, his ball mask on. So to change the the face plates, you just pop out that hair piece, and then you can swap out the face plates. So you get this other one with him sort of <laughs> in a uh, angry sort of expression, which looks really funny. You do also get this expression piece for his ball mask to make it look like he's getting angry or maybe getting ready to use one of his attacks. And we'll take a look at how those fit on as well a bit later. Figma do also include this little um, plastic bag to pull your accessories in. I do like that they include this, just helps keep everything neat and tidy. So this is a very welcomed inclusion. Here we'll take a look at Inosuke. And I have to say, it does look really cool. I do love the look of this, this figure. And you've got his, his ball mask on there. And that looks really good quality. Exactly how you see it in the anime. I do love the detail in it. You can see the, the separate hairs that are sculpted in on that to give it some more, some more detail. And just going down on the body there, you've got some nice sculpting on the, the fur that he's got on the waist, as well as some nice wrinkles in his um, bottom part of his gi. So head can look down that march, can look up, not that far, but you can look side to, from side to side pretty well. It does this head does have two pieces, so it's got like one floating piece uh, that's just underneath the mask. But we'll have a look a bit later. You can actually remove that to give it some more some more range of motion in the head there now looking at the arms here they can go out to the side but you just need to be careful of how you've got them positioned in regards to the uh to the mask there the shoulders can drop down and as you saw there you can get a full 360 degree turn on those so just spin them all the way around you do have a swivel kind of swivel on the forearm and as well as in the in the hand as well torso it can move slightly to uh, to left and right but didn't seem too great in terms of motion does have an ab crunch there but this is me just playing around with the figure without heating him up or anything so this is Exactly how it'd come out of the box. So looking at his his fur that he's got on his waist, you do have those little holes there for you to put his katanas on the wrapped up versions, and the the waist is movable as well. So it's got some little pegs there that you can lift up. So he's got a hinge on there, so you can move them out the way, give it some more expression. So if he's like jumping in the air, you can move his the fur that's around his his waist to give him some more expression, which I do which I do like. So his legs here, you can drop them down to give them some more range. But it does look a bit funny with his fur out the way there. It's got like a like a massive gap. Um but of course you can pose him in a way where you can't really see that. So his leg can kick up pretty far, as you can see here. Some really nice range on that. Can kick back as well. To the side, pretty well. Probably get him into like a full split. Um, his leg here does bend in two parts. So you've got a bend at the top of the knee and then another bend at the bottom of the knee just above the shin. And also at the bottom of the foot is on a ball joint, so I can move around any way you want. 
there is a hinge there at the foot as well which could give it some extra extra range and help with posability you do have a swivel there swivel on the leg and in the shin as well so it's a good amount of good amount of articulation on this guy as you'd expect so his katanas would fit on the side right in here now it was quite tricky to get these parts uh plugged in here as you can see i'm having a bit of bit of difficulty i would definitely recommend heating it i'm heating him up to get these fitted in properly and here you can see i've got both of his katanas fitted on i didn't heat anything up i just <laughs> used brute force to try and get them in but they are in so we'll fit on the separate well separate snout piece for for an Oskay's mask here i do love that they've included this which really helps give in more expression to be really good with posing getting him into some really dynamic poses like he's using using some attacks i really like this looks really cool we'll try on his unmasked head but we just need to get this forehead off it has gone quite a long peg down the neck so you need to use a little bit of force to try and get it off or apply some heat and then it should come off easy but there you can see I've popped it off there and it is actually in two pieces like you see there so here I've got the head fitted on without the other part um, and you can see it gives it a lot more a lot more range so they can look down really far and look up pretty far as well so you could have this head on without that extra extra part there at the bottom just to help with more range and here we have an Oske headless at the moment so we'll fit on his unmasked head which that comes with the peg already in so both those head sculpts don't worry if the <laughs> if you feel like the pegs come out with with the head because that's how it's meant to be and here we've got him unmasked and i have to say it's really good quality i love the faces on these figma figures i just feel like they're very accurate to the anime so we'll try on his other face plate here which you just need to pop off that front part of the hair sculpt and then you have access to remove those those face plates and here you can see him with his sort of angry, annoyed expression there. And we'll have a quick look at his hair sculpt. And I have to say it is really good quality. I love how it transitions into the blue there. Now we'll do some comparisons. So we'll bring in my other Demon Slayer Figma figure, Zenitsu. You can see how these guys compare in terms of size. So fairly similar, but I think Inosuke is just a little bit taller. As you can see here, they both look really good together, as they should, uh, being both from the same anime and the same toy line. Uh, so these will be in scale with each other. And you can see the differences in terms of articulation, especially in the, in the torso there with Inosuke and Zenitsu, obviously Zenitsu is with his full gi, and now we'll bring in Denji from Chainsaw Man. This is from SH Figure Arts, so you can see how these compare in terms of size. If you wanted to mix and match your figures for toy photography, or just for some cool dioramas or scenes that you want to do, uh, you can see how Inosuke compares to some other figures. And we'll take these guys away now. 
overall I would say I really like this figure. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I do love the anime and I love Inosuke's character. He's funny, he's serious when he needs to be, he's always ready for ready for action, ready for a fight. Keeping the character in mind, I think one of the main things that I liked about this figure was the posability and articulation. So Inosuke as a character he is extremely flexible and he can move his body in all sorts of ways, uh, even shift his organs around. Um, I think the articulation on this figure is pretty solid, so you can get him into many of the poses that you'd see Inosuke do in the anime. And we do have a lot of accessories in terms of hands to go along with Inosuke, so you can give him a lot of expression, a lot of different poses, and I'm glad that they include those little stickers as well, which will help with giving this character more expression. In terms of how this figure looks, I'd say I'm not 100% happy with it, but I think it's good enough. There are some parts in the sculpt which they did have to sacrifice to give us some more articulation. I think the main thing that I that I noticed was the chest and um, the sides of the character of Inosuke here. The chest seems very narrow, and I think they've done that to to help with range and articulation on the figure. So I can see why they've done it. You know, they had to sacrifice some parts of the sculpt to give us a bit more articulation on the figure, which I am happy about because I, this character he is very flexible and maneuverable, which you definitely want to translate that into any sort of figure that you'd create for this particular character. If I were to compare him to Zenitsu, I would say uh, overall, I think he's a much better figure. Uh, Zenitsu's lower part of the body just kept popping off all the time. I did manage to sort that out, but posing this figure around, I didn't have the same problem with bits popping off, especially on the torso, which I am really thankful for. So my overall impressions of this figure, I think it's, a lot better than, than Zenitsu, but not to say that Zenitsu is a bad figure by Figma. Um, just had a flaw which was easily sorted actually, so I haven't had any issues with it since, which I am extremely happy about. Would I recommend this figure? Yes, I would 100%, but there's a few things to consider here. Now, these Figma Demon Slayer figures are quite old now at this point. So, I'm not too sure if Figma is still releasing any more Demon Slayer figures. I've not seen any new announcements or any new releases from them. Now, saying that, I know SH Figure Arts are releasing Demon Slayer figures, which seem to be considerably cheaper than the. Figma alternatives, but from what I've seen so far of the SH Figure Arts, they are lacking in terms of uh, accessories, but I feel like their articulation will probably be um, on par, or if not better, than the, the range that we have from Figma. So I would probably recommend just holding out and seeing the SH Figure Arts version of Inosuke and waiting for that to come out so you can really compare the two together and see which one that you'd prefer. We haven't heard anything solid about that yet, so we don't know if they'll definitely release Inosuke, but I'm sure they probably will. Um, but I can't say when that'll be. But overall, I would probably say you're better off waiting for a little bit 
or if you're like me and can't wait definitely pick this figure up because you will not be disappointed thank you for watching